Moving on to wide receivers, go ahead, before we get started, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, do what you got to do, send us some love. Now, wide receiver one, pickup of the week has got to be Chase Claypool, currently wide receiver, wide receiver 15 in scoring through five weeks. Commanded 11 targets, more than 32% target share out of the 34 Big Ben attempts. Turned that into seven receptions, 110 yards, and three scores. Also had three rushing attempts for six yards and a fourth score on the ground. The usage inside, what, the 10-yard line on the ground. He was obviously Ben's favorite target in the game. He's only rostered. In 8.8% of leagues. Alex, how much fab are you running out to drop on Chase Claypool in redraft? I do not think he should be your top waiver waiver target this week. I think T. Higgins offers more season-long value than Chase Claypool does, honestly. And the reason I say that is there's a couple reasons. One, of the wide receivers on his team, he ran the third most routes. So he was behind James Washington. He was behind Juju Smith-Schuster. I understand that the targets were there, but he was not on the field as much as either one of those two, and that was after Deontay Johnson got hurt. I would much rather have Deontay Johnson than I would Chase Claypool. I would much rather have Juju Smith-Schuster than I would Chase Claypool. It was one week he had not done really anything I mean, he was fine. He caught a long touchdown. He's a he's a dynasty player for sure. But on a one year redraft, how much value do you really think you're going to be getting out of him going forward? Once Deontay Johnson comes back, Chase Claypool is clearly their fourth best receiver from a who they're allocating snaps to. We've talked the last couple of weeks about be aware of Chase Claypool. He's, you know, slowly keeping up, creeping up on. Washington's snap counts and he might take over some of those looks that's absolutely true just because he went off for four touchdowns doesn't mean he'll have more than four I don't I don't even know if he'll have four touchdowns the rest of the year just because he had him in one week does not mean that you should be overpaying for him to you want to pay for future performance not what he's done in the past and that's the danger with bidding on waivers is wow this guy was really great let's go get him and he's not going to do that again the rest of the year. I will guarantee you that. So well, that's why I think I'd rather go T. Higgins than Chase Claypool. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously not going to score four touchdowns in a game again. I can I completely agree with you there. I just think that... Uh, See, I'm right about that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's very hard for any player other than quarterbacks <laughs> to score four touchdowns in a game, and they have to do it by throwing them. <laughs> Um, now I just, the schedule is appealing. Like the Steelers had going into the season, had the second easiest schedule based based on strength of schedule, their bye weeks already out of the way, which is another plus. Um, I guess my thought on his season long outlook is I really think that when Deontay comes back, it's not like chase Claypool goes to the bench. I really feel like chase showed everybody what he can do this week if given an expanded role granted it was extremely you know like statistically skewed towards the ceiling of what his production could be um i would say that i think james washington if i had to bet probably disappears when deontay comes back And I haven't seen or heard anything as to how severe Deontay's injury is. Um, No, they uh, they said that he's he has a good chance of playing next week. Interesting. Okay, so if if Deontay can start and play again as soon as next week, then really, I think that what it does is it could be like the. Ravens backfield version of wide receivers where they just throw in a bunch of dudes and none of them get meaningful enough stats and any one of them could pop off and be a wide receiver two or top 15 or whatever guy that given week but you're stuck starting all three of them trying to peg which one's going to go off 
Like Juju didn't really do much in that game uh, because nope. Claypool absolutely took over. So if you can, if you can guess which one of those three are going to have the week, then, you know, you should be betting in Vegas, not just playing fantasy football with your friends and family. Um, I would still try to roster him. He needs to be rostered a hundred percent to me I agree. In, in all leagues. I just would try to not break the bank to do it. Um, just because he obviously hasn't shown that he can do it in back to back weeks. We don't know what the workload is when Deontay comes back. I would spend 15% of fab to try to get him if I'm trying to be aggressive. Um, other than that, because if he's out here doing that, oh man, the ceiling is just so huge with him. Like it's, it's through the roof. I just don't know what realistically how much playing time it really just comes down to the snaps i don't know what kind of snap outlook he has for the rest of the season under tomlin is if you if you could tell me that he was going to go out there and play 70 to 90 percent of snaps any given week for the rest of the season i would say go out and spend 30 30 fab on him but i don't know that so and that's what you're going to run into in your league is somebody's going to go out and spend 30% on their fab on him this week and you're not going to get him. And guess what? You're going to be okay. Like, yes. He, yes. He had 11 targets this week. The, the first three weeks he had targets of two, three and four. So the, I, I get that clearly he has a high ceiling, but when all of their receivers are healthy, if, if Deontay Johnson was playing in that game, do you really think he'd have seven catches for 110 yards and three receiving one rushing touchdown? No the answer way. is no. I think I think some at least most of that would actually have gone to Deontay Johnson. So I again do not go out and and break the bank on this guy. I know you might want to if you're rough at receiver. I personally think that T Higgins, if he's available in your league and hasn't been picked up yet is the better option of the two. And maybe you can buy a little lower on T Higgins, even though we've been talking about him for three weeks at this point. But yeah, Chase Claypool, great game. That This, you know, you asked me earlier uh, in, in our pod here, would, would you drop, um, w- would I drop Big Ben for Goff or Fitzpatrick or Andy Dalton? And the answer is no, because of the weapons that Ben has and they they seem to like to sling it, and Ben feels healthy, and he looks healthy. I believe this is the most touchdowns he's ever thrown through his first four games. So that Ben is a better is a really good quarterback, and when he has the weapons, and and they're going to start going four wides with James Conner in the backfield and spreading defenses out and running it up. I really like the prospects of their offense um, at Buffalo Week 14, at Cincinnati Week 15, and then home against Indy in Week 16. Week 16 is a rough matchup for them, but you got to like the first two from a points perspective. So, yeah, I mean, Chase Claypool should be rostered. Wouldn't spend a ton on him. Uh, I'm I'm sitting more in the 10% range, honestly. Definitely makes it a lot easier for the Steelers to negotiate contracts uh, with uh, Juju in the offseason as his contract expires because it's like, hey, Juju, we uh we don't really need you, buddy. We got like, this bright big new shiny toy <laughs> so but uh yeah hey juge how <laughs> much money do you want <laughs> we have some weapons and we cannot pay you <laughs> oh lord all right that's what everybody tunes in for alex is singing now moving Sorry. on uh <laughs> Whoa, didn't see you there. You can't sneak up on me like that. I'm sorry. I was just making some trades. How about you hit that subscribe button? I'll show you what it was.